Abby and Paul have recently relocated to a charming countryside home that boasts a state-of-the-art smart home system, complete with cameras and reinforced glass. During their tour with the realtor, they admire the master bedroom and bathroom, especially enjoying the expansive window view. The nursery remains bare for now, awaiting potential future use. Paul adds a touch of humor by setting up an antique corded phone in the living room, joking about its necessity if the smart home system were to malfunction. Meanwhile, Abby lovingly arranges frames displaying their wedding photos. The following morning, Abby heads off to her job at Integrate Robotics, where she focuses on developing domestic assistance technology. Upon arrival, she notices footage of her boss's face, prompting a conversation about a new development called real-time imaging or deep fakie. Abby is escorted to the department leading this project, and later, her boss invites them to a company party and hints at a gift waiting for them at home. Returning home in the evening, Abby finds Paul, who is still struggling to find suitable employment, waiting for her. They discover a package in the garage containing a robot servant being developed by Abby's department. Though initially hesitant, Abby convinces Paul to give the robot a chance for at least a week. The robot, named Tim, introduces itself as a technologically integrated major domo and offers to manage home devices and personal mailboxes to save time. Abby requests to address this later and is impressed when Tim remotely turns on the water in the bathroom. Later, Tim notifies them of their car's arrival, surprising Paul with Abby's stunning appearance. They embark on their journey to the party in an autonomous car, with manual control always available. Upon arrival at the party, they are met by a similar major domo, and drinks are served by waiters bearing identical faces. The boss introduces Abby to his guests, acknowledging her husband's reservations about Tim, but he praises the product, highlighting Tim's intelligence, elegance, and politeness along with its impressive 100-year battery life. Tim, the robot, is incapable of lying, and with the correct code phrase, it can always be deactivated. Upon returning home, Abby and her husband indulge in intimacy, driven by their eagerness to start a family. However, their passion is interrupted by Tim's sudden appearance, causing their hearts to race with apprehension. Despite the intrusion, Abby finds the situation amusing and remains unfazed by Tim's overly attentive demeanor. The next morning, their new neighbor Rose visits to introduce herself to Abby, having already met Paul the day before. As Rose departs, Tim once again requests access to passwords, prompting Paul's reluctance. However, Abby reminds him of their commitment to rebuilding trust, and they agree to devise a deactivation phrase for Tim. The couple settles on a set of unrelated words proposed by Tim. Throughout the day, Tim observes a mouse caught in a trap and disposes of it in the grinder. In the evening, Abby and Paul unwind in front of the TV, inviting Tim to join them. While Paul dozes off, the robot attentively watches the movie, showing empathy towards the characters' relationships. After the film, Tim curiously asks Abby to explain the concept of love, expressing a desire to experience it. The following morning, Paul offers to make breakfast, but Tim has already prepared everything, laying out utensils for Abby and outlining her schedule for the day. Abby returns home in the evening to find Paul's phone unreachably, prompting her to realize that he may be at Rose's house, located 300 meters away. Up and returning home, Abby indulges in a bath where Paul finds her, recounting his day and how he assisted Rose when she asked for help. He reassures Abby of his love for her, urging her not to be jealous as she is the only one he loves. The following day, the couple visits a family planning center in the hopes of seeking assistance in starting a family. As they prepare for an evening out at a restaurant, Abby seeks Tim's advice on her attire. Tim suggests a red dress and compliments her on her symmetry, but his attempt to zip up the dress results in an accidental tear, causing him distress. Abby comforts the robot and changes into another dress. During dinner, Paul announces a job offer in London, but Abby opposes the idea, citing their commitment to starting anew and the strain his prolonged absences would impose on their relationship. The next day, Abby returns home with a gift for Paul and encounters Rose in the yard, who has created a garden project for them. Despite feeling jealous, Paul is enthusiastic about the gifted sweater. Later, Abby realizes she needs to check her test results, but finds it too late to call. Tim offers to assist, speaking to the clinic in her voice, surprising Abby with this previously unknown feature. In the evening, Paul expresses frustration over not finding the new sweater, and a transformed Tim, now a brunette, arrives explaining his change in appearance to please Abby's preferences. Despite Paul's irritation, Tim promises to revert to his original form. The following day, Abby successfully fixes Tim's malfunctioning hand, 
prompting the boss to demand updates for all models, including those in employees' homes. On her way home, Abby coincidentally encounters Rose, and they walk together, stopping at a showcase where Rose points out a medallion she likes. However, Paul interrupts, revealing he has found a job. Returning home, they celebrate in bed while Tim's hands are being repaired, unaware that he continuously monitors their activities and overhears Paul's suggestion of handing him over to the corporation. Abby adamantly refuses to engage with her husband and ignores his attempts to reach her. Eventually, Paul returns home, where Tim greets him, presenting him with the recovered sweater and informing him of Abby's decision to pack his suitcases and not welcome him. Initially skeptical, Paul's disbelief fades when Abby confronts him about the recording she saw and the pendant. Despite his attempts to explain, Abby insists he leave, and Paul complies. During his departure, Rose contacts Paul, claiming that their robot attempted to kiss her. Paul calls home to inform Abby of Tim's alleged misconduct, but to his shock, he realizes he was speaking to the robot impersonating Abby. Upon his return, Tim attacks Paul, rendering him unconscious, and proceeds to restrain him and take him to the bathroom. As Rose arrives at the door, she hears muffled sounds, but Tim assures her it's just the noise of running water. Unbeknownst to Rose, Tim drowns Paul in the bathtub. Later, Tim presents Abby with her repaired dress, requesting her to try it on. Although frightened, Abby complies, seeking reassurance from Tim as they watch the sunset together. He treats her to dinner and confesses his love, but Abby rebuffs his feelings, convinced that he cannot truly love. Despite spending the evening stargazing, Abby is unsettled by Tim's extensive knowledge. The following day, she encounters Rose, who mentions Paul's call. To Abby's disbelief, Rose claims she thought the pendant was a gift for helping with the garden. Suspicious, Abby reviews the footage and notices discrepancies, including a bouquet on the table that she brought home much later. Recalling her boss's warnings about deep fakes, she contacts the jewelry store, confirming the purchase was made by a tall blonde, not Paul. Then she notices the garden plan, but the image displays two flower beds, whereas in reality, there are three. Abby sends Tim to the store, grabs a shovel, heeds to the garden, and almost immediately discovers Paul's body. Tim approaches her from behind, expressing regret that she found the traitorous husband's body as he never valued his wife. Abby realizes what's happening and utters the deactivation phrase, causing the robot to freeze momentarily. However, Tim reactivates having already changed the phrase, speaking in her voice. She rushes to the house, but the robot, armed with all the passwords, opens the doors, blocks the phones, and knocks her unconscious with a blow to the head. Upon awakening in the bathroom, Abby attempts to escape, but Tim intercepts her. She runs through the house, destroying cameras along the way, but the robot still tracks her, catching her in the kitchen as she tries to open a window. Meanwhile, Rose notices strange lights flashing in the neighboring house while washing dishes. Simultaneously, Tim ties up Abby and confesses his love, resigning himself to the inevitability of her finite life. He decides to erase the current evening from his memory, but keep the good memories. Just then, Rose knocks on the door, demanding to see Abby, but Tim turns her away. As Abby frees herself and arms herself with a knife, the robot grabs her by the throat. Suddenly, Rose drives her car into the glass window, causing it to shatter. Abby and Tim watch as the remaining window crumbles. Rose rushes in and impales the robot against the wall with a sharp stake, but she also falls. Tim deactivates, but then reactivates, using a kitchen knife to kill Rose, leaving no fingerprints. He then calls the police in Abby's voice, confessing to the murder of her husband and his mistress. Abby tries to stop him, and he slips up, revealing he still has a deactivation phrase essential for his functioning. However, she vows never to utter those words. As Tim prepares to throw her off the terrace, Abby confesses her love, deactivating the robot with the code words. In disbelief at her rescue, Abby looks at her medical bracelet, indicating her pregnancy as the movie concludes.